Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the world class items. And before we begin, just a reminder that we do have a Discord channel now because I know Exodus and Zombie are particularly keen to have new members. And a huge thank you also to Q Mystic for all the incredible thumbnails. There will be a link to the Discord and Q Mystic's channel in the description so please check them out. The term world class refers to 200 incredibly powerful items that each hold a myriad of devastating effects. Some of these effects are so powerful that a subset of these items are simply known as the 20, and the 20 can only be used once. That said, there are some single use items that are not part of the 20, such as the Caloric Stone. The Guild of Einzelgone had 11 world class items in their possession, while the next highest number owned by a guild was merely 3. Starting with the 20, let's look at 5 elements overcoming. Its name derives from overcoming relationships among 5 elements in Taoism. 5 elements overcoming has the ability for the user to request a change to Yggdrasil's magic system from the devs. In the past when it has been used, there was a request from the users to be unaffected by the change they tried implementing. But they ended up receiving an apology from the devs as it would have been too difficult to change the game systems without affecting them also. A stronger version of this world class item is Ouroboros, which can request a change to Yggdrasil's game mechanics generally, and not just the magic system. The request can also be a more extreme overhaul of the magic system compared to 5 elements overcoming. It is said to be a ring that contains a more powerful version of Wish Upon a Star. In the past it was used against the Guild of Einzelgone to prevent them from accessing one of the 7 hidden mines for a month. Doing so prevented Einzelgone from obtaining a monopoly on rare metals and allowed the users of the world class item to retrieve said metal. According to the author, it was also possible that if given permission by the devs, it could copy the effects of a different world class item. The name Ouroboros derives from the ancient symbol of the dragon eating its own tail that means cyclicality. Some cultures even believe this to be the dragon that guards the exit to the universe. It is also believed that either Ouroboros or Five Elements Overcoming was used to transform the New World's magic system, tainting wild magic and weakening the Dragon Lords while allowing tier magic to become more widespread. Moving on to some more offensive items, we have Longinus. Longinus allows the user to pick a target and delete them from existence, and naturally such a strong ability comes with its own massive downside. The downside is the user shares the target's fate, and is therefore also deleted. The only way to bring back any players deleted by this item would be with another world class item, such as Ouroboros which we just mentioned. Interestingly, if Longinus were used against a custom NPC, it would permanently reduce the maximum level of NPCs created using the guild base's special feature. According to Christianity, the Spear of Longinus was used to stab Jesus Christ during his crucifixion, with the name Longinus being taken from the centurion that stabbed him. The next member of the 20 is one that is especially potent against Nazarek. Ahura Mazda is a world item capable of inflicting massive harm to those with a negative karma rating. Its range can affect the entire world, so those in Nazarek without a world class item of their own to protect them could be in danger from this item. That said, Ainz's Throne is a world class item in of itself and protects the interior of Nazarek from other world class items. The name Ahura Mazda derives from the creator and soul god of Zoroastrianism. This god is believed to be benevolent and uphold justice, hence the item's effectiveness being exclusive to those with a negative karma rating. There are also two unnamed members of the 20 currently residing in Nazarek's treasury. One is of unknown power, however the other is said to have the ability to remove statuses such as mind control from a target. The final known member of the 20 that has a name is World Saviour. World Saviour takes the form of a club and is initially very weak. Over time the weapon grows stronger until the weapon is strong enough to allow the user to conquer Nazarek on their own, with their strength rivaling every guild member combined. As it is one of the 20 and is consumed after being used, the most likely scenario is it grows stronger while it is wielded and disappears along with all its strength as soon as it is unequipped, similar to how Einz's Red Orb is described in the web novel. Speaking of Einz's Red Orb, let's look at the first non-20 world item. Einz's Orb doesn't have an official name but it holds many powerful abilities. 
Despite not having an official name, Momonga's name is said to be attached to that of the world items, and the name couldn't be changed even if someone else came to own it as it belongs to Momonga. The world item is said to be very versatile with a variety of powers, although the most we know is that one of them is very effective against dragons. Using the world item would also cost Ein's 5 levels worth of experience, which limits how freely he can use it, although its effects are very powerful in the right scenario. In fact, this item is so powerful that in the web novel, when 1500 players invaded Yggdrasil, over half the invaders fell victim to and died as a result of this world item. The world item is incredibly strong and Razor's Edge wasn't even able to dent it when Climb attempted to destroy it. When Robertic of Foresight tried to punch it, the orb remained unharmed but the recoil destroyed the gauntlets Robertic was wearing. In terms of what makes it similar to World Saviour is in the web novel it is mentioned that the orb becomes more powerful the longer he equips it, but if he were to unequip it he would lose all the benefits even if he immediately re-equipped it again. Moving on to the next item, Atlas is a world item named after the Greek titan who held the sky on his shoulders. This item of unknown effect was once in the guild of Einzelgone's possession, but it was stolen from their guild base pre nazarek when they rented out their guild base. Next is Avarice and Generosity, which is a pair of gauntlets that Mare now holds. Its contradictory name likely stems from its equally contradictory appearance. The effect held by these gauntlets is that they can absorb experience and store it for later use. This is useful as Mare cannot make use of further experience gains due to his level being 100, and this item allowed him to absorb the experience points from the fallen soldiers at the Katsi Plains. In the web novel, the experience is stored in Avarice, while the white gauntlet Generosity siphons the experience from Avarice for experience costing spells and abilities. The wild item given to his sister Aura was Depiction of Nature and Society. This is the scroll with dimension isolating capabilities that we saw her used against the Quagua. It works by swapping a painted landscape with the real world with the painted world being almost the same. Once the enemy is drawn into the illusion, the wielder can choose from a hundred other worlds to overlay onto the target's portion of reality, as well as instill a variety of effects onto the target. The worlds include lava lands and boreal landscapes that deal fire and ice damage respectively. The effects the owners choose can include who takes the fire and ice damage previously mentioned and who is immune to it. There were also battlefield overlays that allowed the user to create a sizable number of reinforcements with 60% of the enemy's strength after a certain period of time, or face the enemy with an equal number of stronger entities with 80% of the user's strength. One of the unique aspects of depictions of nature and society is that unless specific other worlds are used, then one of the 40 escape routes would be randomly chosen, and if the enemy managed to escape through it, then the world item's ownership would fall to the ones who escaped. This is how the guild Einzelgone originally obtained the world item, by escaping after it was used against them. The name depictions of nature and society comes from a Chinese legend about a man going into a painting and living there. The items Billion Blades and Hygieia's Chalice are both world items that we don't know the effect of, but we do know that one went to Demiurge and the other went to Kokytus. Which one went to who is also unknown though. In Greek mythology, Hygieia's Chalice refers to a bowl or cup that is surrounded by snakes and is owned by the goddess of healing and medicine. Shouty's world item is also unknown and doesn't have a name. What we do know is her world item used to belong to Oriel Omega of the Pleiades. As for Albedo, her world item is Ginnon Gagat. Albedo received Ginnon Gagat from her creator Tabula Smaragdina, despite Tabula not having permission from the rest of the guild to do so. It can destroy large areas and is the most powerful world item against physical objects. Its downside is it isn't very useful against individual targets and is weaker than a specialised divine class item. Regardless, it cannot be destroyed or damaged and has the ability to change forms. Its transformed form is Albedo's main weapon, although it shouldn't be confused with her alternate weapon, the Axe Free F, which we typically see her use. The name Ginnon Gagap refers to Primordial Void, or the bottomless abyss that existed before the creation of the cosmos in Norse mythology. One of the world items that appears most often in the series is the Throne of Kings. This throne is made of a single massive obsidian and acts as Ainz's throne. The guild was rewarded with this item as a trophy for clearing the level 80 dungeon the Great Tomb of Nazarek in a single attempt. This is the same Nazarek that would later become their guild base. 
Its item allows a buff to the user sitting upon it, allowing them to see the stats of all the user's allies inside the Great Tomb. The throne also protects the tomb from any divination magic from enemies and activates countermeasures in Nazarek's defence system in response to enemies. The name itself refers to Shakespeare's Richard III. The final significant world item is Downfall of Castle and Country. This is the world item possessed by Lady Kyrie of the Slain Theocracy. This is the mind control item that took control of Shaltir, and normally Shaltir would have been under Kyrie's control, but as Kyrie was wounded while taking control of Shaltir and later died, the mind control was incomplete, leaving Shaltir in the state Ainz finds her in. The item originally belonged to the six great gods and is now in possession of the Theocracy's higher ups. As a world item it can bypass the racial immunities to mind control as shown by Shaltir, but it was unsuccessful against the Platinum Dragonlord due to him being able to use wild magic. The name Downfall Castle and Country means a really beautiful woman who can even make a country fall, similar to Helen from the Trojan Wars. Other world items we know about include Seeds of a World Tree that allows the user to change racial classes including from undead to human, and an unnamed world item that can summon an endless legion of very strong demons. This is also potentially one of the 20. There also exists the Caloric Stone and the Nameless Book of Spells which I have gone over previously. In short, the Caloric Stone can be used to make a Golem's Core and the Nameless Book of Spells contains every tier and wild magic spell in it except for super tier magic. In addition, the Deep Darkness Dragon Lord is said to hold one of the 20 world class items which he obtained when he killed a player. Other Nameless World items include an item that allows the user to create an NPC without the use of a guild base, an item that can increase the level of an NPC, and an item that can turn the user into a world enemy. The last of these was once used by the former champion of Masfelheim to become one of the Lords of the Seven Deadly Sins. Eins also owns a weapon of unknown power called Two Worlds Mandala. That wraps up pretty much everything, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it really helps out the channel, and our Discord server is linked in the description for anyone to join. So with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day.